7.4 in your Foundations of Math and Pre-Calculus 10 course is using a substitution method to solve algebraically systems of linear equations. So the key points here are we are solving. We are doing this algebraically and not graphically. So we're not using the graph or the graphing calculator to find a solution. We're actually just doing uh, math. Okay. So we're taking the equations and we're going to manipulate them and work with them in order to find the solution. And of course, the solution is still the intersection point okay, of what would be the graphed lines. So that's still what we're looking for. But today, we're going to focus on using a special method. And there's two main methods, well, three if you include graphing. There's graphing, there's substitution, and one more that we're going to talk about is called elimination method. But today is the substitution. So um, I want you to, if you could, write out uh, these formulas or the equation for these lines. So d equals 350t. And this is just an example of distance uh, versus time, and we're using the d and t variables. And the other one is d equals 1400 minus 400t. All right. So <clears throat> I am going to use this graph, though, to explain what we're going to do algebraically. Now, at this point, you all know, as we've talked about in the last few sections, as I just mentioned, the solution to a system of linear equations is the point of intersection, right? That's the solution. And why is that the solution? Well, the solution is one single point that satisfies both lines. So at the intersection point is the solution to the whole system. Now, if you think about it another way, all right, what we can think about is we are looking for the point where both equations are equal, in a sense, right? Where both equations are equal, in a sense. They have equal x values and equal y values at the same time. Now, the substitution method uses that sort of concept, okay, to say, if I want this equation to equal the other one, how could I make one equation? Make one equation from the two. Say, so so that's, that's one thing you want to think about, is making one equation. And if we're letting the equations equal each other. We're looking for this point where they both equal each other. They are the same. Consider this. This, um, this really is equal to D, right? And this is also equal to D. So if we have two things that are equal to the same thing, those two things are equal. So this is sort of what we're going to do. We're going to let the equations equal each other. But in a sense, if we just take a look at one at a time, so let's take a look at, um, let's take a look at this bottom one, okay? 1400 minus 400t. How can I introduce this equation into this second equation? Anybody have an idea how I could make two equations from one here? Okay, would you add them together? Okay, great. That's a great idea. It's actually not right, but it's a very good guess, okay? If you added these together, you see what you'd have to do is you'd have to add this together like you suggested, but then you'd have to add this side together, and you would get um, 2D equals, and then you would have this. Now, that's going to give us one equation. Um, Yes, but we're still going to have two variables, and so it's going to be difficult to solve. Because what we're going to try and do is, as well as making one equation, we want to try to have one variable to solve for. Okay? So, with the information I gave you, that was a great guess. Um, and uh, maybe uh, next day, when we talk about elimination, you're going to be more correct, okay? But this one, I, I'm going to make that other qualification. You should write this down here, too. We want, and I'll get to your hand in a second, we want only one variable to solve for. Because remember, we're doing this algebraically, so if there's one unknown, that's easy to solve for, so that's what we're trying to get, okay? 
So you were close, but was there another suggestion? Okay, okay. That's, that's what I was looking for. So you were very close the first time. Uh, what I'm looking for is this can go into this second equation right here because guess what? This is actually equal to d, so let's put it in place of d in the second equation. And this is where we get the substitution, okay? So d equals 1400 minus 400t. Well, what does d actually equal in this situation? We also know that d equals this right here, so we are going to now substitute. So you substitute uh, something from one equation into the other. All right. So this is where we get our substitute. Um, uh, okay, I'm going to put it this way. What one of the variables equals... So what one of the variables equal into the other equation. Okay, so there's our buzzword, substitute. And this 350t in this case is going to go in for d. And that's going to make one equation with only one variable. And those are the two things we're after. So we're going to have 350t equals... 1400 minus 400 T. Now, as you know, we have two variables, but when we solve algebraically, we kind of want to solve for one variable first, and then we'll substitute in to get the other one, right? If we can get one variable that's common to both lines, it's easy to find the other one, all right? So that's kind of the point. So now we have just T to solve for it. Now I do sort of grade seven stuff, and we combine like terms, Okay, I'm going to add 400 to both sides. All right. And, whoops, uh, it's not T there. And I'm going to divide by 750. I'm going to get T equals... Oops, let's quit that. 1400 divided by 750 equals 1.866. Now, the, the reason why I have the graph here is so that we can kind of just check if, if this is reasonable. Does that make sense? 1.866, that looks pretty close to what I see there in the graph, right? So that, that looks uh, reasonable. Now that we've got the T, see this way I'm finding the same T that's in both equations. You see that? Making them equal. The same T. So now I just substitute this t into either one of the equations, the original ones, and I can solve for d. So it doesn't matter which one you pick. I'm going to pick this one because it looks pretty easy. So I'm going to go 350, what is t? Well, we just found out it's 1.866, and that's what equals d, so I'm going to solve for d now. And this is how you get the second variable, the second part of the solution. times 350, 653.3, 653.33. Okay, that's what I get, and let's just check with the graph that we know about here. Let's see if that's reasonable. Well, if this is 700, that looks pretty close to about halfway, so 653 would be reasonable. Okay, so that's your solution. There's the, the D and the T, and you could write it like this, I guess, 1.866 comma 653.33. There's your solution right there. So here's another example, and um, as I mentioned, you kind of want to isolate for one of the variables in one of the equations, okay? That's the, that's the first main part of substitution. You want to get one of the variables by itself. Now, this is 3x, this is 4y, this is 2y, over here we have x all by itself, at least in this term. So do you guys see that it's pretty easy to get this x all by itself, like x equals, right? So let's do that. Let's get rid of this, move it to the other side. It becomes a negative 2y over there. So this equation now becomes x equals 2 minus 2y. Does 
Does everyone see that? I've kind of rearranged this equation so that I have one variable all by itself and positive on the one side. Okay, so for substitution, that's sort of your first step. Get one of the variables in one of the equations all by themselves. It doesn't matter which variable you start with, doesn't matter. Um, someone may start by, by uh, you know, solving for x here and doing that substitution. Someone may do the y and do that substitution. All of your work will look totally different, except at the end you'll get the same answer. Okay, so it doesn't matter which one you do first. But now, okay, so this is important. This is where you say, okay, I see what x equals. In this whole situation, x will equal 2 minus 2y. So you say, okay, let's go to the other equation over here, and you're going to substitute. So what am I going to substitute in for what? I'm going to put 2 minus 2y right here. This is going to go in for x. Yes, so instead of going 3x plus 4y equals negative 4, I'm actually going to write 3 times 2 minus 2y plus 4y equals negative 4. It'll look like this. So here we have it substituted in right here. So that used to be x, used to be x, but you know what? I know what x equals. It equals something else, and it's it's important that we have y over here because look at I have y and I have y I don't have any x's in my new equation which is good you only want one variable in your new equation okay it's making sense so far okay now we go back to our algebra skills and we say okay how can I solve for y well if you have brackets here that are multiplication right you need to simplify this so let's multiply and distribute so that becomes uh, 6 minus 6y, you multiply that out, plus 4y equals negative 4. So now that the brackets are all gone, I can combine like terms, which I see right here, the two y terms. So what is that going to be when I combine those? Negative 6 plus 4 is going to be negative 2. Y, good job, equals negative 4. Okay, I need to get y all by itself now, so I need to get rid of a couple things. I need to get rid of this 6 and this negative 2. So, let's go, let's get rid of the 6 first. Minus 6 from both sides. If I combine the negative 4 and the negative 6, that's negative 10. And now this 2, which is multiplied by y, I'm going to divide that off. Both sides, of course. It's an equation, so you do both sides. So you get positive y equals positive 5. So here, we know that the y value for both the equations, that's part of the solution, is 5. And that's half it. Now we're almost done. What do I, do you remember what we do now with this y value? Plug it into one of the original equations. Exactly. It doesn't matter which one. It doesn't matter which one. You look at them and say, which would be easier to plug into? Well, I don't know, maybe this one, right? we got to solve for x, so let's just plug into this one. So, and it's, I know this isn't technically not the original equation. This one was right here. So, as long as you've done this correctly, like uh, this manipulation, then this should work fine. But if you've made a mistake here, then you might be in trouble if you use that equation that you've manipulated. But it should work fine, and it will in this case. I think we've done everything right so here now, x equals 2 minus 2 times, we say 5, x equals 2 minus 10, so x equals negative 8. So our, our solution should be, huh, wow, why did I write y there? I don't know. Negative 8, 5, that should be our solution. Two ways to check. Finally, two ways to check, see if you're right. Those two ways are, um, if you go back again, I would say, let's go back to our original equation, see if I can erase properly, which I can't. But if you, your two original equations, I'm not going to put that y back in there. Oh my goodness. 2y. So if you plug in your x and your y into both equations, it should make that statement true for both of them. It should fit for both of them. The other way 
is to graph the system. Find the intersection on your graphing calculator. You can check to see if it's the right one. Okay. So I'll just uh, I'll just show you both those checks uh, here in a minute, and that's the uh, that's the lesson. Okay. So here's the check. So there's your algebraic check. It works. Both of those work for um, both of them. Okay. And I guess facts are there. And then we'll do the uh, the graph. All right. So another way to check here. Um, first of all, here's algebraically. That works. I plugged x and y into both equations. Left side equals the right side for both. The other way to check is to first of all solve for y for each equation and then plug your uh, what y equals for each equation into the graphing calculator. Hit graph and find the intersection point as we've been doing in class. Five, yes first curve, yes second curve, please guess the intersection. And we have, oh what's this, point seven two and two. Oh, something may have gone wrong here, let me double check my equations. Okay, so here's, sorry, I, I went back to the wrong example. Here is the, are the equations, plug them in, graph them, and you see an intersection point here. Second function, calculate the intersection point, enter, 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 and negative 8, 5 is the intersection point. So that's, that's a way you can uh, check each of those. And there's, yeah, there's the equations there. So that's how you do substitution algebraically, and there's the assignment for the class.